It says, a very large crowd uh, spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Say Hosanna. Hosanna. I was doing a, a bilingual service before this one, and we say in the bilingual service, Hosanna. <laughs> it's a joke. I don't know if it's funny or not, but it's a <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna, Jose. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, you're not, you're, not, you're not a joking mood today. Oh, you're going to be you're going to be a tough crowd today. Okay, okay. Say Hosanna. Hosanna. All right, and tell your neighbor, say, "Do you know what that means?" Don't look at your notes. You blew it. All right, all right. Say it means save now. So when you cry out Hosanna, you're saying, "Lord, save us right now." How many want the Lord to save right now? Okay. So in Psalms 118, this is where Matthew and Mark, Luke and John, they all talk about the, tri the triumphal entry of Christ um, into Jerusalem and where they begin to put their, their, their cloaks, their, their, their prayer shawls, and they begin to put the, the palm branches down. So, and they, en they, were, they were entertaining the king. They're inviting the king to come in. Now, Psalms 118 is like where that comes from. That's why they were doing it. It's a, actually a, a celebration uh, that God required of his people. And they would celebrate with palm branches. They would celebrate these ways. And it's actually a reminder of the exodus of Egypt. When they came out of Egypt, God said, every year I want you to have this celebration. And so in Psalms 118, is like, is like a, a, I don't know, it's like the reference to what they did in the New Testament. So if you really want to understand what they were saying when they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, you have to understand Psalms 118. And so we're going to break down Psalms 118 so you're going to understand Palm Sunday and Hosanna maybe like you've never understood it. And so it literally means, def definition is, Lord, save now. Okay? And so Psalms 118, verses 21 through 26, not in your notes, but I'm just going to read it, and then we're going to break down every one of these verses today. Verse 21 says, I will praise you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now. Save now. Say Hosanna. Save now, I pray, O Lord. I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Now, Hosanna. Lord, save us. Say it again. Hosanna. Lord, save us. Save us. save us. Now, when you look up the word saved, it means something saved. It means deliverance. So how many have ever had an issue in your life where you needed freedom in that area? Freedom. Whether it was a, a depression, an addiction, a bondage, a sickness, whatever it was, a lack of poverty, spirit, a generational curse, uh, you needed freedom. So when you say, Lord, or Hosanna, you say, Lord, Save me or deliver me from that bondage. The word saved also means aid. How many have ever needed God to give you aid, to help you, to heal you, to restore? Yes. The word saved also means victory. And I believe that when we cry out to God and, and say, Hosanna, save us, I believe victory is sure to follow. And then it also means prosperity or provision. So when we say, Lord, save us, we're saying, Lord, deliver us, aid us, give us victory, give us prosperity, give us success. Psalms 118, 21. I will give thanks to you, for you have heard and answered me, and you have become my salvation, my rescuer, my savior. So number one, write this down. Hosanna, Lord, save now our friends and our families. In Acts 16, 31, it says, They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, 
and you will be saved. How many are grateful that when you cried out, Hosanna, the Lord saved you and me from our sins? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Not maybe, not possibly, it's a fact, Jack. How many are grateful that when you prayed for the Lord to save you from your sin, he didn't say, oh, come back next week, or you're too drunk today, you're too high today, you're too wild today, you're too messed up today, you're too jacked up today. Go change your life and come back and then we'll talk. No, you cried out to the Lord in your sin, and I cried out to the Lord in my sin. It reminds me of the woman caught in adultery. And the religious people said, stone her, kill her. The law said, kill her. And Jesus started writing on the ground. Nobody knows what he wrote, but I kind of think he was writing all their dirty deeds. And the Bible says, as he was writing, the religious leaders started dropping their stones and walking away. He's like, I know what you did last week, Pedro. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Vote for Pedro. Come on. I know what you did, Pedro. And they all walked away, and then he tells her, listen, today you having, I'm giving you mercy. Now go your way and sin no more. He, didn't, he, didn't, he, he accepted her in the condition she was in. Or the thief on the cross. What did he do to get there? Robbed, pillaged, stole. Who knows? Murdered. But yet Jesus tells him, today you'll be with me in paradise. It's heavy, right? Then for me, 31 years ago, my mom invites me to a concert. Doesn't tell me it's a Christian concert. Tells me there will be a lot of lights. So I take acid. I go to a concert. Because I feel guilty because mom, you know, got raided by the cops. So I'm feeling bad about it. So mom leverages it <laughs> and says, well, will you come to a concert with me since they raided my house? At least you could do that. I'm like, yeah, I'll go, mom. Sorry. Took some acid, went to the concert, high as you could get, and there I called out, Hosanna, Lord, save me. And the Lord didn't say, hey, get sober, stop selling drugs, change your life and come. He literally said, you come with your crazy self, pockets full of meth, It's heavy. It's heavy. So why are you saying this? Because we're going to cry out Hosanna for our friends. We're going to cry out Hosanna for our family. We're going to cry out Hosanna, and God's going to save them. He's not going to clean them up and save them. He's not going to fix them and save them. They're going to come just like they are. Somebody ought to shout, hey, Hosanna in the highest. Heavy. There's no, other, there's no other higher than the highest. So he's the highest of the high. So when God saves you, you're saved. I don't care if nobody believes you. I don't care if nobody likes you. It doesn't matter. When God saves you, brother, you save. You save all the way to the top. That when you die and you slip through eternity, you end up at the throne of God because when he saves you, he saves you. Somebody ought to shout like he saved you. Powerful. <laughs> Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with, come on, say it with me, along with everyone in your household. How many, how many household names do you have on that board right there? I said, how many household names are you standing for? I'm coming in agreement with you. I'm believing God. Come on, every name on, that, on this cross will be saved. Hosanna! Lord, save my friends. Lord, save my family. Save my loved one. That's why I feel like we need to pray. Because there's spiritual warfare before people get saved. 
Before I got saved, all hell broke loose. That's when they raided. That's when it looked like it was never going to happen. It looked like my parents' prayers were going to end up in shame. But when they called on the name of the Lord for their boy, God was faithful. God was reliable. God was dependable. And their cry for help became their praise because God answered their Hosanna, their cry to save our boy. How many believe today's cry will be tomorrow's testimony? Today's cry will be tomorrow's breakthrough. Today's cry will be tomorrow's shout of praise and victory. Why don't you give God a a victory shout for what he's already done and for what he's about to do? For the Son of Man has come. This is why he came, to seek and to save the lost. Luke 14, 23, go out into the highway, our responsibility here, and hedges and compel them to come in. Compel them. Now, that's not a nice word. Like, you know, if you really look at the word compel, I wouldn't ask you to do it to somebody right now. It literally means to, like, drag. So, you know the statement, like, when you grew up, mama used to drag me to church. She was in the Bible. <laughs> you going to church, you live in this house, you going to church. You going to the house of the Lord. I don't want to go. I don't care if you can have a bad attitude in church, but you going to church. You live up in this house, you going to ch- compel. So we need to bust that out on Easter. All year long you've been nice, but on Easter you're like, you know, that's it. That's it. It's over. You're going to church. Ah, uh, no, it's Easter. That's it. You're going to church. And all the prayer is going to be going forth. It's going to be breaking demonic warfare. The devil's going to lie to your family. Don't go to church Don't, for all kinds of reasons, but it's all demonic. But prayer pushes back the darkness so they can see the light. <laughs> prayer. When I, call, when, I, when I call an audible on prayer, you need to listen. Even if you can't make it, you need to pray at home when we're praying. Because it's going to break, bring breakthrough. It's going to bring salvation. The Lord's going to save now. God answers by fire. God answers our prayer. And if two or three would gather in the name of Jesus and ask anything in his name, he'll perform it and he'll do it. So we're asking him to save. We're asking him to deliver. We're asking him to make a way. Amen, somebody. Go out to the highway and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. This is full. Look around. We're full. Hi back there. Sorry. We're going to get a new building for you next week. All right? So you don't have to be back there no more. It's full. Look around. See? It's full. Tell your neighbor, we did our job. Yeah. But now, tell them, we got a new church to fill. And how many know God's house is going to be filled just like this house was filled? Because Jude one twenty three says... Read out loud with me. Others save with fear. Why? Because how many know when you reach people, you got to be careful? So what do you mean, Pastor? Because sometimes they say, I'm going to go reach my friends, and your friends reached you. So you're like, hey, man, and going, they're over smoking weed. You're like, hey, the Lord loves you. And the next thing you know, the Lord loves you. No, no, we're not trying to do that, brother. <laughs> he try to reach them. They reach but you. No, no, we don't. That's why you got to do it with wisdom. you gotta be, you got to do it with fear. Not like fear, like, like, you know, like anxiety, but like fear, like, you know, you know, you're, you know, you're on your toes. Because if not, I've seen a lot of people go reach their friends and family and loved ones and they end up backslid. So you got to be smart in how you do it. But with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Who's going to pull them out of the fire? Listen to me. Who is going to pull them out of the fire? God. Not what the Bible said. You got to pull them out. They're going to come to church. How are they going to get here? You got to drag them. You got to, see, the, see, Lord save them. Now what are you going to do about it? And again, wisdom. Mark 16 says, go into all the world and what? To every what? So if we don't go and we don't preach, then maybe God will go and do it for us? Because he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe, it will be what? Say it. Will be what? 
What? What does that even mean? Condemned. Condemned to what? Sentenced to what? Yeah, exactly. So if we don't go, this is why all the fighting, I, I, I don't like this at all. Preachers fighting preachers on YouTube. Bro, stop wasting time. Use your pulpit to change and win souls. But that's what the devil wants. He wants us fighting. And, uh, uh, uh. And, and that tells me that's somebody who's lost, you lost your purpose. That's not a purpose. My purpose is to talk about other people. My purpose is to find out who's the real and who's not. What? No, your purpose is to save souls and make disciples. I'm preaching right now. Tell somebody you have a purpose. I was at a big business leaders conference yesterday. And my friend was speaking, so I went, to, and, and he got me some tickets, so I went to go support them, support them. And this talking about money, they're talking about prosperity, 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 which is great, fine, that's great. But then the guy comes up, the owner of it, and he's like, well, he, he said something heavy. I was like, he said something heavy right there. He's like, listen, if you get all this money, but you don't have any purpose, then you're going to end up where I ended up. And he said, empty. Because if you think money is going to satisfy you, you're already deceived. This is a secular event. <laughs> He starts talking about, you know, wells and feeding the poor and all this. He's looking for a purpose. Well, as a Christian, we should do all that. But the main purpose of a Christian is not just to feed even though we feed people. Not just to give them water even though we should. Because you can't say, oh, Jesus loves you and not give them water. Come on, somebody. Jesus loves you and not give them food. Jesus loves you. No, you got to meet the practical need. But the end result must be the gospel. Because what good is it if you have food and water and you die and go to hell? you got to hear the gospel. So the purpose, the highest purpose, the highest purpose, the highest purpose in life is to win somebody to Jesus Christ. Every one of you have a purpose. Get that in your spirit. Get a hold of that. Your purpose is to preach the gospel. My purpose is to lead people to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And those that believe will be saved. And then it goes on to say, and is baptized. The pastor, people have to get water baptized to go to heaven? No. He's not talking about that. Look at it in context. Because the thief on the cross wasn't water baptized and he got saved. But after you get saved, your next step is you have to be water baptized. That would be like a confirmation. That's where you, you get in that water and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that right there becomes your moment that you stand before God and say, that's it. My life is over. I'm buried with Christ. And you go under that water and we leave your sin there and you come up free. That's that moment where you declare to the devil and all his demons, I don't belong to you no more. My past is gone. That's that moment where you declare to friends and family and loved ones, I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. The old is gone and the new has come. Hosanna, save now our friends and our family. Acts 4, 11 and 12. This is good, huh? So why do you think I give you all these flyers? Just to give them? I'm doing my part. These are expensive. Why do I do that? You, you got a rubber band. Some of you just got a rubber band full of flyers. Do you have them? No? They didn't give them to you. Orale. Come on, somebody. You have them? Wave them at me. All right, if you need some. Why do I give you? Why? Do, why? Just so they can look cool? No, this is so you can invite people. I'm going to pray for your loved ones right now. Grab the flyer. Lift them up to heaven. I'm going to pray for your family. Father, I pray for every person. Go ahead and lift those flyers to the Lord. We're going to pray. Because this is why we're here. If we, if we don't get a hold of this, then what are we doing? Amen. Now we're going to pray together. Lift it to heaven. Say, Dear Lord. Pray in the Spirit for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Say, Dear Lord. I cry out Hosanna. Not just for my life. But I ask you to save my family, my brothers, my sisters, my family. Save those in my house. Save my friends, my neighbors, my coworkers. Lord, give me those opportunities to invite them. I command Satan to get his hands off them right now. He, I declare whatever I bind is bound. Whatever I loose is loose. I take authority over every lying spirit 
that blinds the mind of my family, of my loved one, of my friends. I command that to leave now. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for divine appointments this week. Give me the opportunity and the moment to invite them to the house of the Lord, to preach the gospel to them, that they may be saved in Jesus' name. Satan, get your hands off them. And I declare over my friends, my family, my loved one, Hosanna, save now, save now, save now, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 and amen. Give God a shout like your cry will be your praise. My mother's cry for me is now her praise. So she gets to see me up here serving God, worshiping God. Before it wasn't a, a praise at all, it was a cry. She saw me on drugs and running madness, but her cry for Hosanna, save my baby, now has become her praise. Lord, look what you've done, and it's marvelous in my eye. How many believe the cry for your family and your loved one will become a praise and a testimony of the goodness and the miracle power of God to save? And it doesn't matter how bad they are. Nobody is too, too far from the grace of God. If somebody's going to shout and clap by faith, give them glory like you believe it's true. All right. All right. I'm still preaching. I got, I got a good message for you here. Acts 4.11. Let's read. Say, Jesus, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. So they, they were building. These were religious leaders. They were building. They were building. And when it came time to build, they went to, they went to Jesus and they said, oh, no, we're not using him. He's not, he's not good enough, which has become the cornerstone. He actually became the most important piece to the, to the religious system or the community or everything. In verse 12, salvation exists in no one else. It's powerful. It, this is a lot of people is what I'm noticing. They want salvation they, 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 want, they want to be saved. They want to be delivered. They want aid. They want victory. They want prosperity. They want their sins forgiven. They want all these things, but they want to do it another way. There's no other way. There's no other way. You could try it, but it won't work because salvation exists in no one else. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not Confucius, not modernism, not science, not an AI. Come on, somebody. No, 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 no. There's salvation in only one name. Oh, you're narrow, pastor. You're narrow, pastor. Yes, I am narrow because the Bible says the gate is narrow and broad is the way of destruction. This is the Bible, y'all. For there is, say it with me, there is no other name under heaven given to men. Oh, thank God his name was given to men. Given to men by which we must be saved. But thank God that we have been given by his mercy a name that has the power to save. And that is the name of Jesus Christ. And if you call on the name of Jesus Christ and you ask him to forgive you and you come unto your heart, he will save you. He will rescue you. He will save you right now. Clap like the Lord is a savior. Praise God. Can you handle any more? Are you sure? Number two. Say number two. Save now. What does Hosanna mean? What does Hosanna mean? What does Hosanna mean? Save now and turn our, write it down, rejection and, and shame. Psalms 118, the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You see, Freedom City, rejection is a hard thing for anyone to experience, but it is marvelous in our eyes when God turns it around for our good. 
I don't know what area of your life that has brought shame, disgrace, and rejection, but God says, I'm going to save you, and I'm going to turn that rejection into a masterpiece. I'm going to turn, I'm going to lift the shame and I'm going to bring blessing where there was shame. And your cry for help will become your cry of praise because Hosanna will give you a blessing. First Peter 2, 6 said it this way. For in the scripture it says, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. Isn't that cool? You know what a cornerstone is? It's like you build a building. And you put in the, in, the, in the corner of the building like, like the most important piece. And you put it. That's the cornerstone. And it says that Jesus, when the builders, because sometimes back in the day when I used to build, we used to work on different things. And we'd go get wood. And you have to look at the wood. Is it warped? Or is it messed up? And you would just throw that wood back and say, no, no, we're only going to get the good wood. You wouldn't even bother using it. And it came time to build. The, the, it came time to build. And it came to Jesus. They looked at him and said, nah, it's no good. And God says the very thing the builders rejected has become the most important piece. Why did he do that? Because so many people come to Christ so broken. People discarded you. People left you. Abused you. Walked out on you. Even parents just walked out, hurt you, and they just rejected you. And people even in society, for some of you, just rejected you. You, you, never, you never got picked. You weren't next in line. But God is the great equalizer. And if you cry out Hosanna, God will take your shame and your rejection, and he'll raise you up and make you valuable in his kingdom. Somebody give God a praise like he is Hosanna. We cry out Hosanna. Lord, save us. It shows an precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him, the one who trusts in him, wave at me if you trust in him. All right. The one who what? Trusts in him. How many are trusting in him right now? Okay. Every area of shame, every area of rejection, you need to trust the Lord in it. And the Lord will never let you be put to shame. The Lord will never let you be put to shame. Now to you who believe, his stone is precious. Every area of shame doesn't matter. God's going to turn that shame around. I mean, just even this book, think about it. Think about it. This book is full of my shame, of my family failure, of orphan, of being abandoned, of being abused. All, all, all terrible things. But I, I said, Hosanna, save me. And now all of the rejection and all of the shame has become a testimony of what God can do in your life. And what God can do in a life. What God can do in my life. Come on, clap. Like God's going to turn on. But you got to give it to him. You got to give. Look, look, I'm going to prophesy right now. Because so many of you in here, you have generations of bondage. Generations of addiction. Generations of shame. Generations of stuff. And, and it's been generations. And somebody in the family has to come before the Lord and say, Lord, this is what's happened in our life. This is what's happened. But, Lord, we're going to trust you with our shame. We're going to trust you with our rejection. We're going to trust you with our failure. And the Lord's going to take it. And he's, I'm telling you right now, he's going to turn it around. And it's going to become one of your own. It's going to become, for some of you, the most powerful message that you carry. The grace of God. The ability of God to take what the devil meant to destroy you and raise you with that very thing. Somebody clap. Somebody shout, Hosanna, Lord, save us. I don't care the son, the daughter, the family member. You come to God. I was at the crypto center the other day and just, I looked up in those big old, they were building those big beautiful apartments. Now they're all written with graffiti. What happened? It's a shame now. They started building and building and they couldn't finish. They ran out of money. And now it's an embarrassment. But God can take an embarrassment and turn it around. God can take a shame and turn it around. God can take, come on, where the enemy has a trophy now. Look what I did in her life. Look what I did. The devil's a liar. I'm going to take that trophy from Satan and I'm going to give it to God. And God's going to get a trophy out of my life. Somebody praise God. Your pain will become your praise. Your cry for help will become your praise. Those who look to him for help, Psalms 34, 5, and 6, those who look to him for help, how many are going to, that's why you're here today. You say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I find myself, the older I get, Lord, just help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. That's Hosanna. Lord, help us. Lord, save us. Lord, do something here. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy, and their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried. What does a poor man have? Nothing. No value. 
Nothing to bring, no, nothing to offer. Not an, he's not gonna, you're not going to be a, an, an investor. He's not going to partner. He has nothing. But the Bible said that even this poor man cried in desperation. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord saved him from all his trouble. Thank God the Lord will, even when you have nothing to bring but pain, shame, shackles, addiction, and a broken heart, you give it to God. And God will hear your cry. And he'll save you from your trouble. He'll deliver you from the madness. He'll bring you up like you've never dreamed. He'll raise you right out of the ashes. Somebody give Hosanna. 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 Hosanna! Save us now. Number three. Can you handle any more? Number three. I'm preaching better than you're shouting, but that's okay. Number three. Say, Hosanna! Say, say, save now. And give us the ability to build your kingdom. They prayed. Psalms 118, the same thing they prayed. They said, oh Lord. Say, save now. Say it five times. What did you just say? Hosanna! 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 Save now, my friends and family. Save now and turn our rejection and shame. Save now. Save now. Do you believe the Bible? I said, do you believe the Bible? Read it with me. Oh, Lord. Save now. This is a prayer. We pray to you. Oh, Lord. We pray to you. Send now prosperity and give us success. See, you prayed that week. You prayed that like God has a problem with it. But I call out on God. Lord, send now prosperity. Lord, I got three cups and an amen, but you if you act like that, you ain't getting nothing from God. You gotta cry out, Hosanna! Why are they crying out to God this way? Because they're building the tabernacle. They're building the house of God. They're building in the building and they need resources. They're crying out, God, give us resources. I pray this prayer every day. Send now prosperity. Make me, Lord, a multi, 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 multi millionaire. Why? Because there's buildings to build. There's land to buy. There's homes to open. There's orphanages to build. Somebody ought to help me preach a little bit today. Send now. See, if you, if pro, I was at that convention and I was so happy that the guy did that. It was a secular event. And the guy in the middle of it, everyone's talking about, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And, ah. and then the guy says, if you get money and you don't have purpose, you have nothing. And this is a secular event. The world knows more than the church. This is horrible. You talk about prosperity, the church, oh, I don't know, I don't believe in it. And then, and then the world's over there digging wells for, of water, feeding and clothing people. And we're over here not even understanding prosperity. I bind that. Sin prosperity right now sin prosperity right now sin 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 send it out somebody ought to give God a hosanna Lord save us in this area that's what we did last week we brought our money in but in Jesus name one day not too far in the future Many of you, God's going to blow your mind with finance. For some of you, it will be your children and your children's children. And we're going to be bringing hundreds of millions of dollars into the kingdom of God. Ezra 3.11. Read with me. With praise. Say with praise and thanks. They sang this song to the Lord. Say it out loud. He is good. His faithful love for Israel endures forever. Then all the people, all the people, because what do they do? They, they gave and they built the house of the Lord and the foundation was laid. Then all the people gave a great shout praising the Lord because the foundation, 
the foundation of the Lord house has been laid. What have we been doing, Freedom City Church, over the last several years when we got Greenleaf and Hadley? God said, build a base, build a foundation, and we built the foundation, and we're building the house of God. And God said, as you bless my house, I will, Hosanna, I will save, I will bless your house. Somebody ought to shout in here today. And I close. And I close. Number four. Tell your neighbor, great job. We give him our highest praise. Why? He didn't have to come. He didn't have to die. He didn't have to do it. But he did it. How many are grateful that he did come? That's what it said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I, I love this, I love this, I love this. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Where are we at right now? Who built this house? God did, but who did he use? He used you. And the house we built for him, this is the house we bless him in. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I'm going to give you 20 seconds to bless them from the house of the Lord. Come on, this is the house you built for him. Next week, next week, Freedom in Espanol will be there at 9 a.m. Hands lifted, hearts raised. People will be getting saved next week in our new building. That's the house that we built for the Lord. And people are going to bless the Lord from that house. You know why? Verse 27. Tell your neighbor, you know why? Because the Lord. That's the wrong neighbor. But turn to them again and say, you know why? You know why we built the house? Because the Lord has been good to us. He's given us light. He's illuminated us with his grace. He's given us freedom. He's given us joy. And the scripture says, with branches in your hands, start the festival. That's what Palm Sunday is all about. You see, you see, Palm Sunday, palm branches symbolize victory. So when Jesus was coming in and they were putting the palm branches down, they were saying, here comes victory. Here comes victory. And it means triumph. It means peace. It means eternal life. And I love it because Hosanna began as a cry for help. But, but it became an expression of praise, adoration, and celebration. Now these are good palm trees. Come a little closer. You see, they came with their palm trees and their cloaks. I looked at the word cloak and it was, I thought it was just like a shirt, but it was more, even more valuable than the shirt on their back. It represented their salvation. And the Israelites, they wear this. I see mine. And they wear this. You can see that when you go to LAX or any uh, the airport, you'll see the Jewish people because they, they have, they're wearing this, but their clothes are over it. So they came up off their clothes and they took their cloak off. And they said, no, no, we're going to give him what's the most important thing to us. This represents our relationship with God, our covenant. This is the God that brought us out of Egypt. This is the God that took us out of Pharaoh's house. This is God that made us a people when we were not even a people. This is the God who gave me hope when I had no hope. And they began to lay down their cloaks. And they began to lay down their palm trees. And they made a, they made a way and they began to declare, this is victory, this is triumph, this is peace. And Hosanna 
The cry for help now has become the cry of praise. I don't know what you've been crying out to God for, but I'm telling you right now, your cry of praise is on its way. Your turnaround is on its way. And I, and I studied it. Matthew said it one way. Mark said it. John said it the same way. But Luke said something different. And it jumped out at me. I said, whoa, Shondo. I said, Lord. And Luke said, they laid their palm branches down in their cloaks. And they shouted and they praised because the things they had experienced and seen. And I thought, oh my, wonder what, I wonder who was in that crowd. I guarantee you, the woman with the issue of blood was in that crowd. Whew. Imagine her praise. 12 years. She was a normal woman, a very wealthy, successful woman, but she was struck with bleeding and she couldn't be cured. And she went to doctor after doctor after doctor and no one can cure her. But one day, she met a man from Galilee and he wasn't just no regular man. He was the son of David. And she cried out, Hosanna, Lord save me. She reached out and touched the hem of his garment and she was cured from that moment. I could see her with her palm branches. I could see her with her praise. What about blind Bartimaeus? I'm sure he was in the crowd that day because blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, who sat by the roadside begging, Bible never used your last name unless you, were some, you come from stock, you were somebody. Blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, had potential, could have been great like his dad, could have been successful like his uncles, but now he's bound and he's blind and he's begging. He's a poor man and he's crying out, Hosanna! save me and the son of David turned around and said who's calling my name and the disciple said shut up Bartimaeus and he cried the louder you shut up you ain't blind that's my miracle right there and he cried out and he cried out and Jesus touched him and the blind man's eyes were open I'm sure on Palm Sunday he was one of the ones that was crying out Hosanna his cry became his praise your cry will become your praise your cry will become your testimony. Somebody give God praise if he's done anything in your life. I'm sure Jairus and his wife and their family was, was there. But I'm sure the little girl was there that died. And she breathed her last. And Jesus went in there and they said, he said, don't worry, she's sleeping. And then he kicked everyone out of the room. And he said, he looked at the little girl and he, and he, and he said, Talita Kuma, damsel will arise. And breath came back into her. <laughs> I'm sure she was there with her palm branches giving him praise because her family's cry for help became their praise of testimony that God raised my baby from the dead. Some of you are about to get a testimony like that. Your baby's about to get raised from the dead. Somebody ought to shout, Hosanna in the highest. I'm sure there was a woman there with her son. Husband wasn't there. She was widowed. And she had a boy. And he died. And he was on the way to bury him. On the way to the cemetery. Everyone's following just like they do now. Processions. You could say cops, cars, and everyone taking the boy up, up to the funeral. Taking him to get buried. And all of a sudden, Jesus walks up to the coffin and says, Arise. And the dead man, eyes open, he pops up and he hands, his, he hands that boy to his mama. And he said, Take care of your mama now. Come on, somebody. I'm sure they were there that day. I'm sure that little boy who had two fish and five loaves of bread and gave it to the Lord and the Lord multiplied it and then gave him baskets full. Imagine when that little boy came home with baskets full of just fish and bread. His mama's like, where did you steal that from? I didn't steal it, mama. The Lord did a miracle and the Lord blessed me because whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. Come on, clap like I'm talking the truth right now. I'm sure I could go on and on and on. 
of who was there. No wonder why it was the Bible said it was a great shout. It was a great shout. They were putting their palm trees down because the palm tree ceremony is actually a feast of the tabernacle when God said when every year at this time you bring your palm tree and you lay it down and you worship me as a thanks offering of my, me bringing you out of Egypt. Every one of these people cried out Hosanna and God delivered them from every Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of early death, the Pharaoh of infirmity, the Pharaoh of poverty and now they're come on somebody their their cry for help has become their testimony I think one more I gotta say it and then we're gonna praise God I don't care who's next to you I don't care who you brought this is your moment this is your Palm Sunday you're gonna lose your mind in a minute honey you're gonna praise God and God's gonna bless you God's gonna touch you you don't wait for nobody you give God the glory but there's one more testimony I want to say who was there that day? I, I think one more man. It had to be Lazarus. It had to be Lazarus. He died. He wasn't just dead one day. He wasn't just dead two days. See, they could have said, oh, the little girl died, but she was asleep. They could have said the young man was dead, but he was actually in a coma. But you couldn't make no excuse for Lazarus. He was dead not one day, not two days, not three, four days, and he stank. Maggots were already eating them alive. Rigor mortis had set in. The man was dead as a doornail. And then Jesus of Nazareth walks up to a dead tomb. I love my Lord. A dead tomb. A dead tomb. And they're mocking him. Look at him. Look at this fool. Doesn't he know Lazarus is dead? But Jesus said, listen, 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 listen. I am the resurrection and the life. And he, did, and he looked in that tomb and he said, Lazarus, come forth. And somewhere in the ethereal, Lazarus' spirit went back in his body. Supernatural healing. And the dead man, come on, someone. I wonder what kind of praise was there that Palm Sunday. That woman with the issue. That blind Bartimaeus. That mother that got her baby. That Lazarus. Lazarus raised from the dead. Well, I believe there's a Lazarus here. I believe there's a leper here. I believe there's somebody that was dead that's been raised up. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to give God. Give God the glory. Lazarus, give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Bless you. Let the Lord bless you. Let the Lord bless you. Lift your hands and worship. Let the Lord bless you. Hosanna! From the front to the back, hands lifted and give God worship. That your cry for help has become your
Get your breakthrough. Get your miracle. Let the Lord bless you. Let the Lord bless you. Let the Lord bless you real good today. No more sickness. It ends right here, right now, right here, right now, right here, right now. Hosanna! 